Let's talk about visual methods for detecting particles in our oil. So the first way that we can do this is actually when we take an oil sample. It's probably the easiest way. Most of these bottles are going to be like clear to a certain extent, and it means that you can see if there are signs of, let's say, for example, oil darkening or some kind of visual sediment in the bottom. Now, one of the things about this visual sediment is that if you send a sample to the lab and it has visible sediment in it, they're probably not going to test it because that can actually damage some of the equipment. So remember, most of the time when we're talking about wear particles and contaminant particles, they're on the order of a, a few microns in size. Remember, the, the ICP detection limit is actually 8 micron. So we're looking for very, very, very fine things that are typically invisible to the naked eye. So if you can see something that's reasonably large um, and, and you yourself can actually see it, then that's generally not a good sign. That's a sign of a lot of contamination or it's the sign of something like a, a you know, a wear pattern that's a little bit more typical of something like fatigue, where you're seeing larger particles come off the equipment. So in general, that's not good. Now, how could I distinguish whether it's it's uh, a, a fatigue wear problem or if it's uh, just you know standard a standard issue of contamination? Well, um, we can have a look as to whether these particles are magnetic or not. And if they are magnetic, then that's a sign that they're probably coming from somewhere in the equipment. Of course, this isn't relevant if your equipment is, let's say, for example, made from aluminium, right? So this is only applicable for ferrous materials. So that's, you know, your steels and your irons. All right. Um, another visual method that we can use is actually through inspection sight glasses. So often they'll just be kind of like a bullseye sight glass on the side. That's not really going to give you much of an indication of any kind of sediment because there's no kind of like low area for it to lie in. But these kind of 3D sight glasses which have some volume in them, maybe there's a little bit of sediment that, that ends up in the bottom. Um, again, the reality is that it's probably not the best way of detecting it. However, um, a really good way of detecting it is to look at the bottom, right? Because at the bottom of the tank, that's where everything is kind of going to fall down and settle down into. So if you've ever replaced, for example, um, the oil on your car, right? All of the sediment tends to kind of clump towards the, the bottom of the sump and, and that's why we always say that if you are taking an oil sample and you have to use the drain plug, right, uh, generally don't catch the, 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 first, uh, the first oil that comes out because that's not going to be representative of the entire oil system because a lot of that sediment is actually going to be sitting directly above the drain plug. Right? It'll have settled out to that area. But if we're looking for contamination and we're looking for sediment, then this is a really great way of doing it. So you might have seen that these things, they're called uh, BS and W bowls, um, bottom, and, bottom sediment and water bowls. It's a really good way of getting a visual indication of whether there, there is kind of particles, contamination, sediment that's that's settling down to the bottom of the tank. And, it, and fortunately with BS and W bowls, we can do that without having to remove any oil and we can do it without having to remove the drain plug. So generally what you'll see that there's a couple of components to these. Um, so noticeably, um, there's a magnet inside. It's usually made of kind of like a rare earth material. Um, so you know, like a, a neodymium magnet or something like that, which is very, very magnetic. And so if there's any ferrous material, you'll see that on the magnet. But otherwise, um, if there's water that separates out, you'll see it there as well. And sediment as well, right? We expect that to sort of fall to the bottom. And so this is this is the, the, the first way that we can detect if there's contamination, simply by looking at it. And who is doing that inspection? Realistically, it could be anyone that walks past the equipment. Um, but I often say, you know, it's probably going to be your lube tech, right? That's the guy that's doing the rounds each day. Maybe he's doing top-ups. Just a, a very, very quick visual inspection will give him an indication as to whether you have a contamination problem or not.